Soul Mechanics again. This will be the uh, two-parter for the day. I had to follow up because the last one I kind of screwed up. I didn't really, at least I, I rambled on and uh, I didn't really cover what I had, I had hoped or intended to. And uh, I kind of left a new guy hanging there. But uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Um, so, welcome back. Step into my office. Sit the fuck down right there. Or over there, anywhere you want to, just be sure to have a seat and pay attention. Uh, this one is speaking to synchronicity again. And uh, this time we're going to try and um, wrap up the loose ends we left hanging in the last clip. So, uh, to begin, I'd like to uh, speak about what I mentioned that we had struck a bargain. Now, um, this this kid, uh, sorry, and it, it aggravates me if people uh, call me a kid. I am older than most people can comprehend in, in reality, but my birth certificate says I'm 36. Anyways, <clears throat> um, this, this young man, uh, innocent Baku, provided he's a real person, hopefully you're a real person, I don't have an image of you and I haven't really checked out your profile yet, so I don't know, but um, I do have high hopes for him. If, if he is a real person, uh, I feel like he can go a long way. I, I love when new people jump aboard and have an interest. Um, provides the opportunity for me to shine and uh, you know really get into what I'm doing. Is I need I need that inspiration. I need people to show me that they're interested in order to, to get going. Especially because I lost my muse. Uh, Kara is still missing. Kara, if you're out there, please get back to me. I, I, I don't, I don't feel it, I don't get the, the utmost efficiency of my excellence without, without you there lady, you're, you're the battery, you're the charge of me, anyways, uh, I mentioned that we had struck a bargain, and, uh, what's happening there essentially is that being the speedy motherfucker that I am, I'm gonna just go and jump ahead and assume that he's going to accept the bargain, which is, to go ahead and hit the fucking like button right now, like this video, because it's going to be pretty good, and uh, I already made this video once, but I fucked it up, I dragged on too long and it clipped, so I had to re redo it, so we're going to try and do it faster and, and get to the point a little better here, uh, do it a little more well, I guess, this sounds inappropriate, anyways, uh, the bargain being that uh, I'm going to bust my ass to provide all the values that are necessary for him to really get a boost here, jumpstart, and, and help him out in any way I can, essentially do my job as his director, and, and, you know, work my ass off to provide him the leads that he requires to, uh, to move faster and, and to get to where he's going faster, and with a greater degree of excellence. Um, in exchange for him, you, innocent Baku, Baku, however you pronounce it, Helping me to uh, expand the channel. Go ahead and hit that fucking like button again. Don't hit it again because it'll unlike. It, just hit it once and make sure that it likes because I, I think I get something cool out of that. You know, people people get off on getting those likes. I don't know why, but there must be something you get out of it. So I want to collect as many as I can, obviously. And I do feel they're well deserved. And also, to, to share the videos, you know, share the channel with anybody that you feel can benefit from it. Just, um, you know, help me expand here. And uh, that's going to be one of three initial things that I need to mention here in this video. One, the bargain. Um, you know, I, I take my contract seriously. So, I've made a promise here. I'm going to follow through no matter what it takes. I'm really going to hope that you follow through and help me help me to get the channel moving because I really, I want it to be like, this is my heart and soul here, man. I love this fucking channel. I just, I want it to be bigger. I want to get my message across um, to as many people as I can, as best I can. Two, um, something that we want to take into account here that I don't think many people do is, is that... Um, to, speaking to, I, I did, hopefully we're all caught up here, or at least you're getting there. I did give you links to other videos that explain some of the subjects that I'm speaking of. These are primarily terminologies and such that I've put into play. It's part of my thesis on val my doctrine on value and aspects. So, um, you know, most of what we're working with here is going to be things that I've invented for the most part. It's, it's not really, some of it's new ideas. 
but most of it's just a, a more of a scientific spin on, on some of the ideas presented by the elder traditions, the, the old, uh, you know, tra traditions from way back when that, you know, before religion, doesn't matter. Old ideas that I'm putting a new spin on. And uh, something that, you know, as I was, sorry, as I was saying about the videos, um, hopefully you understand that the Eidolon and the, the daemon, as the, the elder traditions used to call it, particularly the Greek culture, is referring to the perpetual and ephemeral self. The perpetual self being the self that remembers everything and knows the greater plan, so to speak, the superconscious or the higher self, while the ephemeral self is the temporal you know, immediate body, bodily self, the brain, the, the inhabited self as it stands, the, the, uh, the unwritten version, but, um, <clears throat> then, then we have, uh, speaking to values, something that I said about values, I, I, I remember in one of the videos that I posted a link to is that values are like unto consciousness as particles are unto matter, I think I said, or, um, it's something like that. I really like that quote, though. That was a good one. It's one of my quotes. Um, another quote I'd like to put into play here is, is one, one of my personal favorites that I came up with. Having faith means knowing that you run the show. That's an important one. Keep that in mind. Having faith means knowing that you run the show. What you need to do here is have faith in yourself. You don't want to lose that. Always have faith in yourself. We're going to speak to that, uh, in a moment, but... Um, something that I don't think, uh, people really take into account is that consciousness, in and of itself, just the very concept of consciousness as an existing presence or entity, it, it, it implies life. It is alive. Consciousness is aware and coherent. It is a living entity, just consciousness itself at the base level. That there's a reason why we have the term intelligent design in play. It's not the, it's not really the concept that there's some like elderly, you know, white beard guy sitting on a cloud in the sky that designed everything. It's, it's that intelligence is the fundamental aspect to existence itself, to creation. Consciousness is intelligent. It is alive. There is there is a coherence and, and an identity to it, and that's coming back to the God concept where we assign an identity to, to the very nature of reality. So that's the, that's the second thing I want to put into play here, just try to bear in mind that consciousness is alive and consciousness is present in everything. Everything is created from consciousness, that source field, and, and values that come into play are pieces of this consciousness representing itself, or recreating itself, uh, assign, and pretty much picking itself apart and assigning what we'd have to refer to as being qualia, or qualifying the self via what we, we'd have to call qualia. If you're not familiar with qualia, we'll get to that. That's going to be kind of a... a point of inference for the entirety of this, but um, essentially synchronicity is operating because it's, al it's alive, values are alive, each value is living, like even coming down to the chemical components in your body, these chemicals are speaking, they're communicating, that's how they operate, and ultimately what they really are, what values even really are, are just, as I've stated, information, they're just they're just, oh, that's nice, they are, um, they're just symmetries, they're, they're patterns, so ultimately coming down to the bottom line, it's just consciousness, it's just soul, and, and it's just one flat material that is everything, it's time itself, and it just, it positions itself in configurations that attribute qualities to it, or attribute these values, the, become these values that, they, they communicate something, and it's the, the relativity in play, it's the response. Again, there's memory and gravity, two primary elements that create a configuration, and then relativity is the feedback that's given between two or more values that, that um, communicate to each other, and it's the communication, essentially, that creates 
what what we'd have to define as being qualia, which is qualia is a term used in reference to or inference really to experiential data, which is to say like the experience of the color. This is one that's commonly used. Uh, uh, example that's commonly used for qualia is the the experience of the color red it exists it's a reality red is real it's there however when i look at red and you look at red and we both define it as being red it could very well be two completely different experiences we're having that we both define as being red and that's the primary value behind it but then the aspects that pop off of that value are our relative experiences and I can tell you matter of fact that yes when you and I look at the color red we are experiencing two different things because I have a color deficiency in my eyes so I'm not seeing the same red as you what I see as being red could be totally fucking different from yours and there's no way for us to tell there's there's absolutely no way for us to discern what the actual experience we're both having is but we both define it as being the same thing that's the value the value is the object, whereas aspects are the subject. So this is speaking to objective and subjective considerations. This is also coming down to what we term uh, ground and free energy. The ground energy is going to be the value, while the free energy are the aspects, the exemplary aspects, the meanings assigned to the reasons. And this is also going to be coming back to internal and external experiences. Um, you know, it's, it's all... If, if, you, if you examine reality going down the line from every different consideration that anybody's ever made throughout all time, in every field, it's all going to have the same thing. There's going to be a duality, the two opposing factors, and there's going to be a trine. There's going to be three composite elementary factors for everything. And you're going to find that everywhere. In religion, literature, and fucking in science, in, in mathematics, in mechanics. Everything has that. And that's because it is the elementary factors of existence. Now, uh, this something that uh, speaks to qualia and, and what we've termed time mechanics in the past, what eventually becomes soul mechanics and print the practice of principal dynamics is um, uh, that what I was mentioning with drugs. I'm, I, I apologize for assuming that you, you've used drugs in the past and saying that that's not, maybe you haven't, I don't know, but um, I certainly have and most everybody I know has. It's, it's just, it's a property of life and um, honestly, there's there's going to be a whole course dedicated to that. That the, actually the operative alchemy course of the toolbox is going to be dedicated to that. Is dedicated to that that topic and that item of inference because uh, you know this whole idea with the war on drugs and all of that is total bullshit. And somebody really needs to be dealing with that at its root. We have to clean that up. That's that is one of the catalyst events. Each course is dedicated to a catalyst event, and. Um, I didn't post, I'll post a link to the video talking about catalyst events. If you want to get into that, that's, that's a, a higher purchase. That's a, a bigger, <clears throat> if you get into the catalyst events and you start working w with the imperative, that's, that's a mission. That's really a hardcore mission that you'll be on. That's not, um, that's not the small stuff. So, um, let's, let's get you going on the basics here. But speaking to drugs using drugs like say maybe you break an arm and you're, you're prescribed pain medication you use that pain medication and then say a certain smell pops up uh, this is referring to using the, the original idea behind time mechanics was assigning uh, causing for certain sen assigning triggering me mechanisms for chemical responses in the brain assigned to sensory perceptions scent is in smell it's the most powerful sense we have in this regard. Um, I'm sure you've experienced something along the lines of, you know, you smell something from the past and it, it feels like it takes you back to that time. It's almost like time travel or the perception of deja vu when, say, music, the more complicated that a sensory perception is, like music is severely complicated. It's got so many different instruments and, and you know, tone, tonalities and shit all coming together into this composite 
sensory perception that's going to be very powerful but still somehow scent even overpowers that but I'm sure like you've heard a song and it takes you back to a time it makes you feel like you're actually back in that time that actually affects your physiology and and it can affect your healing factor and if if you assign a scent or a, mu a you know a musical score or something to the the use of a drug like that pain medication and you smell something every time you use that pain medication and say you get high off of the pain medication like you take more than you're supposed to for example and you get high off of it as most people tend to do that scent that's attached to it you can actually build an association, a relationship in the brain with the two neurons firing between that, the neuron firing for the scent and the neuron firing for the chemical response and actually use that scent to trigger the chemical response without using the drug. And that's what the initial concept of time mechanics was based on. But um, <clears throat> that that's totally getting off topic. I don't even know where I was going with this. But... Um, what I wanted to speak to was magnetic compatibility. That's going to have to carry over in the next video, but magnetic compatibility is going to be getting down to the basics of how synchronicity operates, although what I'm providing you here is, is basically values that allow for you to understand where we're coming from with, with soul mechanics, essentially, so that we can get at the, at, the, at the bigger things. I wanted to speak to karma also, continuing karma. Um, to, to continue karma... That what I was speaking of in the last video, this dude said that selfless acts are good while selfish acts are, are bad or wrong or evil. And, I mean, in a sense, you can say that that's correct to some extent. However, I, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that it's very likely that the goal in life, uh, the goal in being, is not going to be discarding the self as most would have you believe, especially like the Buddhists or the Hindus are going to have you believing that this Samdhi state, discarding yourself, your ego as they call it, which again does not exist, there is no ego and that's what the Buddha was speaking to, he was telling you flat out that the ego is an illusion, as something that needs to be let go of, but uh, you're building this self for a reason. You're here building this self for a reason. I would have to say that what you're trying to do, what you want to do, is line up the values of yourself with what is ostensibly right in, in, in an ultimate reality, essentially ultimate reality, meaning what's most readily accepted by society as a whole. So, um, you know, some of us feel good about doing good things for others. Some of us want to be helpful to others, say. A selfish act, like taking something from somebody or stealing something or, or, you know, hoarding everything, that's shitty. Obviously, that sucks. But what if your selfish act becomes something good? Like, you feel good just about doing good. You're not gaining anything, materially speaking, but you're gaining the good feeling of being helpful to others. I'd say that that's where you want to get to, that you want to line up the self with what is, again, ostensibly good or right and, and get to a point where... You, I, I'd say that the, the ultimate uh, consideration regarding karma is going to be that uh, going to be speaking to what your what the selfish acts you commit um, imply about who you are. So if you're a good person and you like to do good for people and it makes you feel good to do good, then that's you're on the right track. You know what I'm saying? You want to build a self and realize a self. As I said, realization would be the goal here, becoming real, making a real self. Obviously, you being the, the arbiter in this case, you being the determining factor, the, the, you know, the creative influence in play, you're not going to realize a self that you don't like. You know? you're, you're trying to build a self that you can love unconditionally and bring it into realization. That's what I'd say the goal here is. But um, what we have... In reg as regards karma as a rule set for synchronicity, we have uh, something called the Dunning-Kruger effect in, in psychology, which pretty much is like there, there's a self-aggrandizing quality to the nature of personality, in a sense. Like, people who are smart, for example, intelligent people, are going to consider themselves to be lesser than they are and kind of average or even lower than average intelligence. And while people who are stupid are going to think of themselves as being intelligent, 
and this it's because of their mindset it's because of where they are like and and this is going to be speaking to the spiritual aspect as well and and as so far you know insofar as regards karma um good people are going to think of themselves as being lesser than good while bad people are going to be considering themselves as being good and have pride in their actions that's what where the ego comes into play, the arrogance factor. The arrogant people think of themselves as being high and mighty while, you know, good, decent people hold themselves back most of the time. And it, it's largely because of that ego factor, and B, it's, again, because of their mindset, because good people are going to be trying to be good and trying to not be bad and expecting bad while bad people don't give a shit. And so there's this self-aggrandizing factor to that that is going to be affecting your karma. And keep that in mind. That's going to be a way to play around with the rule set later on. We'll cover that in the next video. But uh, the third thing I wanted to bring into play for you, especially for the innocent Baku, is um, I want you to go ahead on the initiative and an post a, an introduction to yourself. Say hello to the directive. Get, get them up and running because they need something to deal with. Like ask some questions or something. Get my team rolling. Give them something to do, please. And, uh, you know, ask any questions you want. And I want you to go ahead, say hello to the group, introduce yourself, and answer the three initial intro questions openly for the group. That is, no matter where you go, where are you, no matter what, when you check, what time is it, and what is always the most interesting question to ask. I need you to answer those three questions on there because that determines your color type. That those three questions, your answers to those, tell us what color you are insofar as regards our color coding system. And that's what allots for me to know exactly how to deal with you. It, if, I got your, if I have your color in play, then I can kind of design a program for you and we can cover it in the videos so I can actually work with you directly in that sense. And, and that, that'll allow for me to, you know, that'll give me a lead on how best to approach your scenario and give you, you know, values that are directly applicable to you as a person. So please go ahead and do that. And, uh... Yeah, that, that, get, that covers everything I really wanted to say here, except for the, the magnetic compatibility, but that's a big topic, so we'll get to that in the next one. Pretty much just wanted to cover uh, the loose ends on the last one that I kind of trailed off on, so um, hopefully I covered it. Um, hopefully I have enough time left. Anyways, uh, oh man, I love this song too. Here we go again, gotta clip it, but um, yeah, that that's it. Please, um... Strike that bargain. Do do that. That it's a solid deal. We both stand to gain. It's good shit. Two. Bear in mind that consciousness, the world is alive. Try to keep that in mind always. It's a primary factor you need to have in mind. The world around you is alive. All of it. It's living. It's conscious. And three. Please do answer those questions and say hello to the group and and just ask anything you want to. Post anything you want to. Just engage and get other people active because we've been kind of on a down cycle. We haven't had a lot of a a activity lately, and that makes me feel down. So help pick it up. Anyways, uh, love you guys, all of you. Um, Innocent Baku, great to have you aboard again. Um, Kilo Salai, Terabi Unisiari, Namaste.